When it comes to paint systems for modelers, ICM are very much the new kid on the block. But they now have this 80 color box. So let's take a look and see what this is all about. Yes, hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. Um, this is uh, part one of a product review of ICM paints. Now, I've been having a little bit of a play with ICM paints, but I want to do it more uh, structured for you guys to show you uh, what it's all about. And we're going to start by reviewing this. This is their 80 color acrylic paint set. Um, it's their item number 3004. It's um, available in the UK. And here's the interesting bit. It's the cost. I got this from a main retailer online for £62.99 plus a little bit of shipping. So £80 for £63. That's an average of 78 79p per pot pricking your ears up now aren't you so these are acrylic paints um, let's have a look at the box and what you uh, what it tells us on the box so on the top it's got these little colored circles which I imagine show you what all the different colors are I've not looked in this yet so I don't know what's in there all I've done is taken the cellophane off um, it came cellophane wrapped um, around the sides, we've got the paint colours with their paint numbers. So that is really handy. Now, although it says 80 colours, I think there's only 77 because you get three varnishes in there as well. Um, and then on this side, um, tells us it's made in Ukraine by ICM Holdings and gives us the address there in Kiev. Um, and then we have some little instructions and they basically say shake well before use paint is prepared for brush so basically what they're saying is you can brush paint these straight from the pot so it'll be interesting to see for the airbrush dilute with water or thinner now I have to say I have not been able to track down any ICM paint thinner in the UK I can't find it anywhere or any of their primers for that matter, um, 40 to 60 percent. So, depending on what you're doing, I guess. Uh, use primer when painting with an airbrush. Colors can be mixed with each other. If the ambient temperature is above 25 degrees, use a retarder. So, I don't know if ICM do a retarder or not. Um, and then, when applying from airbrush, first use primer which is what it said there so doubly important that bit obviously um, but yeah very very nice simple um, and quite handy to have all those colors on the outside so I'm going to take the lid off like I say I've not looked inside this yet ah right okay so like an ICM kit we've got um, uh, a separate lid so that's pretty cool um, so I'll put that to one side so what we've got now is a much more sturdy box so you could use this as, as the storage for it I guess gate opening and then what have we got in here we've got well all the paint and a little bit of packing bubble wrap right at the front there just to stop things moving about a bit I guess okay so first thing you notice is all the colors are easy to um, identify looking down on them because they put the colors on the lids now obviously when it's printed on a label it's not necessarily an exact match but at least you know oh I want I want that American diner pink you can find it even if the shades not accurate it doesn't really matter 
So, um, has a name on the bottle, so it tells you it's a tense pink in this instance. So, other than the name, we've also got a reference number. Um, we'll have a look in a minute and put them in and see if there's a, a one uh, and what they go up to. So, I, I don't know whether this is the full range of paints or just it's a big collection of paints. Um, I'm not sure. Typically, you buy ICM paints in a paint set. I've yet to find anyone selling the individual pot. So when you come to replace one, you've got to buy, buy that one within a set currently. Although I have seen them being sold at um, the, the Telford show last year um, individually. So it, it might be that they're going to get them into the shops as individual pots. But it is a fairly new system. But what you get is a plastic uh, pot. It contains 12 millilitres. Compare that to other paint systems. Vallejo is 17, Humbrol is 14, Tamiya is 10, uh, which is why Tamiya is the most expensive paint system you can buy. Um, but So you're getting more paint in there than you are in a Tamiya pot, but just compare the size. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the, the Tamiya minis, not the old big ones. Deceiving, isn't it? Because that looks it to the eye to be smaller. But of course, it's the thickness of the glass um, that makes the difference to that. But it is deceiving. You saw them on the shelf. Um, you'd think that you were getting less for, for your money, but it's not the case. You're getting nearly half as much again as you are in the Tamiya pot. Um, so we have, um, it has um, a child tamper-proof seal on there. So you know whether it's been opened or not. Uh, we have uh, some instructions on here, basically saying pretty much what it says on the box, um, that it's a water-based acrylic, so you don't actually need a thinner at all. But some of the generic um, thinners would probably work on this. We'll probably have a, a play with different thinners and see how they behave. Um, but. I use Ultimate Thinner as a general thinner for acrylics if I don't have a specific, and, and that's probably going to be fine on this. Um, so yeah, and that's pretty much the information you've got on the box. They do have barcodes on, which suggests that they intend them to be sold as individual pots at some point at least. So um, we've got all this range of colours. We've also got our varnishes, so you get three varnishes, uh, you get a gloss, oh that's not a varnish, oh that's not a varnish, but take my word for it, there are three varnishes in there, um, satin and then no doubt the other one will be a matte, there you go, three varnishes. Um, so they, they actually look quite thin in the bottle, uh, gloss is always the thinner one isn't it? Yeah, right, so that's what you get. Let's have a look at what the colour ranges are. So how many blues, reds, greens, and so on. Okay, I've sorted the colours out now into, uh, roughly, as, as best I can, um, their sort of uh, colour families, if you like. So, you so know. we're going to go through them. The first thing I'll say is the number... Or, uh, the paint reference number bears no resemblance whatsoever to the colour family. So this yellow is 103, this white is 101. So um, all the whites don't go in sequence and all the yellows don't go in sequence, if that make, makes sense. So it, they're just purely numbers that are assigned to them. I, 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 somehow, I don't know, but it doesn't bear any reference to the to the family. So that's the first thing to say. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through these and give you uh, an understanding of the paints that you get in there. There are some really interesting uh, ones uh, and a couple I found really exciting. Um, if you can get excited about paint, then I certainly can. Um, right, so I'm going to start with um, the uh, purples. So there's two of these in the range. You get deep purple, um, which is that nice um, dark lavender like colour, and then you get intense pink, which are the 
the two sort of purple pink colors in there so they'd be great for um mixing with your flesh colors and that sort of thing uh, there's all sorts of uses for them and, and and of course flowers and bushes and that sort of stuff so that's your two uh pinks um when it comes to blacks there is one um standard black um and the other one is a rubber black. So you've got two blacks in there. The rubber black um, is a slightly more gray version of the of the black. None of these say that they're gloss um, or, or matte or anything like that. It's just left to the varnish. So we'll have to try them to, to see. But those are the two blacks that you're getting. Um, then when it comes to flesh, again, there's two colours there. We have basic skin tone and light flesh. And you can see there's quite a difference there. There is no um, uh, black skin tones or anything like that in there. You're mixing colours to achieve that. Um, and like I said, you can mix um, some of the purples and pinks in there to, to get red around the eyes and um, that sort of stuff depending on on your project but yeah you've got two flesh colors then the oranges we have three so we have a, a medium orange which is sort of a standard um, lifeboat orange if you like um, it's quite a nice vibrant orange that isn't it um, and it's a good match for um, Tamiya and Humbrol oranges. We'll talk about matching uh, a little later. And then you've got this deep orange, which is a, a bit of a burnt orange. And I'm already looking at that and thinking that might look really good on my Dukes of Hazard um, model car. But yeah, deep orange, which is a darker orange than the uh, than the bright one, as you can see. And then um, I've put in the oranges because it's got an orange tint but it's sort of between an, an orange and a, and a brown in a way and it's medium rust so it's a red brown orange type color um, slightly paler than some rusts but um, it's a nice shade that that's that's all right as a base for exhaust before weathering and stuff so yeah okay a rust color so all of those were given then when it comes to the the yellows um we've got actually i'm going to put that in the green i don't know why i put that in the yellow we've got two four six yellows so let's go through there your base you start off is deep yellow so you know your propeller tips that sort of thing signal yellow that's where you are with that um and then we've got um beige which is a, a nice sort of stone color um, pale sand which is a very pale sort of um, Jamaican beach sand color that um, I quite like that because it is paler than most sands so I think that's a nice color um, then I've put buff in there fairly standard color um, ivory um, perfect if you're doing um, tank German tank interiors World War two um, might even need a slight hint more yellow in it for, for a tank interior, but it's uh, it's good to have an ivory. Um, and then okra, um, which again, uh, a really nice, well-used um, colour, often used for, for weathering and that sort of stuff. So yeah, good to have that in there. So that's the yellows. Then we've got the browns. Um, and uh, there's quite a few of those. Now, I've put deck tan in the browns. I know it's sort of more, more of a grey, but you think of uh, wooden decks as being brown. So I put that in the browns, but they do have a deck tan, um, which is comparable to the um, Tamiya uh, deck tan, which is a sort of a, a sun bleached tan colour which I always argue that you don't really get because they're, they're, they're scrubbing the decks so often that you, you don't get them the, the sort of grey aged look but it's really handy if you want um, weathered um, wood in your diorama so deck tan really good colour to have 
in that collection. Um, then we've got uh, British khaki, um, which looks like a really nice colour. We have um, tan earth, which is like a, a pale mud colour. You'd easily be able to thin that down and turn that into uh, dust or, or what have you, or um, um, mud settled into your uh, tyre tracks. I think that's a, a nice colour in there as well. Then we've got green ochre, um, which again is similar to the to that earthy colour. You could use it for dusts, you could use it to add variation to one or two of the other colours. Uh, and we've got leather brown, which is a real almost grey colour, but there is quite a brown hue to it. Um, so I, that, that's a, quite an unusual colour that, and I like that just because it's a little bit more unusual. It's not got the, the richness of reddy brown that leather brown quite often has. So I quite like that. Then we've got um, chocolate, good foundation for anything. Um, I, I think it, it's... It's more towards the, the black brown than the red brown end of chocolate, but chocolate they call it. Um, then we've got a light earth, again, another uh, muddy type colour, which is good. Uh, green brown, um, again, another earthy tone, so I like that as well. Um, then we've got um, another saddle brown. Where, where was the other one? Um, oh, the other one was leather brown. This is saddle brown, yeah. Um, and that's um, that has got more red brown in it. That that's almost the leather colour that you'd sort of expect. So using those two together, um, one as a base and one for dry brushing, you could get a nice aged look. So I like that colour, saddle brown. And then finally, uh, deep brown is a nice sort of molten chocolate colour so I really like that as well so a nice range of browns a lot of them um, around um, good around the earth colours then as you'd imagine greens is the colour that we have the most of so we've got what, four six eight ten twelve greens and you can see just by looking down on them that we go from the yellow end of the spectrum right to the dark, dark green end of the spectrum. So uh, let's just go through these. Interior yellow green. So um, for American aircraft interiors. Um, so that's a really interesting colour. Um, from here, um, it looks slightly pale, but possibly when it's... Um, when it's on, it darkens, so we'd have to have a play and see, but it's a really good uh, colour to have um, in there. Then we have lime green, um, often used on British uh, vehicles in Africa, World War II, um, so definitely a use for lime green. It's a really lovely, rich colour. Um, then we've got US dark green, so what I always used to call olive drab as a kid. Um, so basic uh, US military vehicle green. Uh, then we've got an olive green, so a lighter version. Dark green, um, which is, uh, I always think this these dark greens always look a little bit artificial. How many greens do you see in nature like that? I don't know, I mean, AstroTurf green, maybe I don't I don't know, but you've got dark green, so uh, it it it's a good colour as a base for mixing your own greens if that's what you need to do. Um, then we have deep green, and let's just compare the two. You can see this one's paler um, and just a bit more subtle, um, but yeah, so you've got plenty of greens here that you can mix around to get your perfect colour. Grass green is um, a, a nice colour for grass green. Obviously you get lots of different hues of grass but that's a good general grass green isn't it? Um, 4BO green, I have no idea what that is. It must mean something, I'm sure someone's going to tell me it's 
probably a, a, a color reference for somebody or something but yeah they've got one of those um, which is a sort of dark green um, then we've got camouflage green um, which has a more um, dark um, earthy green gray sort of color very nice too camouflage green um, extra dark green which is almost gray almost gray but you imagine you can put a little drop of that into your into your um um interior green to darken it a little bit if you want to do shadow effects it could be a good wash for another green loads you could do with that uh gray green which um bridges nicely into some of those earth browns the tanny type colors the sands um you could do all sorts of stuff there to um give you some nice uh, variations of colors but it's a nice color in its own right and then finally in the greens middle stone which again bridges into those browns quite nicely so there's a lot of natural colors in there but also colors that you'd see in uniforms and the like webbing and that sort of stuff uh middle stone then we've got the reds, and again, we've got a full spectrum of reds. We've got six altogether, starting with hull red. Now, that is a very, very, very dark hull red. It's comparable to Tamiya's hull red, which, of course, is aimed at Imperial Japanese Navy hull red, which was a fair bit darker than um, Royal Navy um, hulls and, and uh, US Navy hulls. So, um, yeah you wouldn't use that on a British ship. So calling it hull red, it's a difficult one because uh, maybe they should have put Imperial Japanese Navy hull red on it. Um, but I would argue that there's fewer hulls that use that red than use a brighter red. So not sure about calling it hull red, but um, it's a nice dark red brown color. Um, you could certainly use that on some German uniform camouflages. Um, I, it's, it would do well on some um, leathers and bits and pieces like that also. Now we've got a matte red. This is the only colour I've noticed that says matte on it. Um, so that's interesting. You often get matte reds used um, inside of um, vehicles, pull handles, that sort of stuff. But it's a really nice, deep, rich red. So I like that. Good to have that. Um, then we've got a blood red, which is an interesting description. And suddenly the paint splashes look a little bit more gruesome, don't they, when it says blood red on it. Um, but again, you compare that, you can see it's a variation. That, I mean, that would be good as um, uh, a tunic, a uh, British soldier's tunic or something like that, dress uniform. Um, we've got um, a deep red, which again is a bit more bright. Not quite a signal red, um, but you could e easily say that was a uh, post box red, a uh, UK post box, easily. Um, then dark rust, which put in the reds because it does, it is a sort of a red, but it's a red brown. It, it could sit in either, really. Um, dark rust. So uh, we've already seen that we had a rust, and now we've got a dark rust. So that gives you two variations of rust. Uh, and then wine red, which is a really nice color. Um, this would be really good for doing shadows in, in tunics and uniforms that have got um, red on. Um, but yeah, that's a really, really nice color. I mean, you could even use it on some leathers and all sorts of stuff. So I really like the wine red. Which then takes us to blues and probably fewer blues than I thought we might have. We've got six. Um, now, given how many sort of blues you come across um, in modelling, uh, particularly with air aircraft, um, I thought we might have a, a bit more of a range of paler blues than we've got. But I, I guess that straddles into greys a little bit. So you might be able to use some of these with some of the greys to get some of the other sky blues and things that you might want. But this is our palest blue, uh, and it's called, not unsurprisingly, pale blue. Um, 
And I would say that was a very much a Spitfire sky blue underside of a Spitfire colour um, once it's been given a good um, mix up. Um, but that's quite a nice colour as I see it there. Now, it doesn't bear much resemblance to the top. So it might be that when we do it, give it a good agitation, it goes a bit more like that colour. Um, but yeah, it's a sort of pale greeny blue colour. Uh, use that a lot. Um, then we've got a grey blue, which is, um, that looks like an RAF uniform blue to me. Um, so uh, a nice colour there, bit, perhaps faded uniform. Um, you might want to put something in a bit darker for shadowing and then you've got a couple of nice blues, but that's your grey blue. Um, then we've got a deep blue, which is a sort of Lego brick blue, isn't it? Um, a good base for mixing your own blues definitely um, as is this dark blue let's just compare the two I'm taking that one out because that goes somewhere else um, so we've got deep blue and dark blue next to each other you can see there's a, a subtle difference there um, but that'd be the start of your blues uh, mixing your own colors and then deep sky blue which says exactly what it says on the tin. Deep sky blue, uh, nice blue. So um, a few nice blues there, but I think a bit of mixing to be done, um, quite honestly. Um, the, the next big range of uh, paints is greys. So after green, you'd expect lots of greys. Uh, obviously aimed at the military modeler uh, in the main, but there's greys in everything. So what have we got here? We've got uh, nine greys in, in total. You could argue a few more in, in a minute when you see. So we start with the German grey, um, which is a typical uh, dark grey colour, um, sort of grey-black uh, colour. Very nice, and I think it's um, a fairly typical German grey colour, that. Um, then we've got a dark grey, Let's just compare the two because they are at the similar end of the spectrum. You can see the dark grey is actually paler than the German grey. So, yeah, very interesting. Uh, neutral grey, which I think slightly darker than other neutral greys. But, yeah, neutral grey. Um, then we've got uh, a dark sea grey. Uh, which has a more stonier grey look about it. Um, I quite like that colour actually. That's really quite nice. Um, then we've got uh, a blue grey, which you can see it's got a hint of blue in there. Um, you know, that could easily be uh, Western Approaches uh, uh, blue green, um, maybe with a hint of lime in it. But uh, yeah, nice colour. Uh, warm grey. We're back to the sort of stone colours uh, and that sort of spectrum. So, yeah, very nice, um, warm, sort of putty grey colour. Um, then I've got a sky grey. Um, that looks fairly typical to some of the other sky greys that I've got. Um, maybe slightly less blue than, than some of the sky greys, but it's a nice... Nice colour nonetheless. I mean, when you put it next to that warm grey, you can see the coolness of it, can't you? Um, then green grey, which has got a green hint to it. Uh, again, another sort of natural grey colour that, you know, you could easily have that on, on stone and stuff and it'd be... You could paint some stones on your sandy beach in that colour and they'd fit in nicely. So another lovely colour. Um, and then German field grey, which of course is a, a popular colour for uniforms and all sorts of bits and pieces. So a nice selection of greys. And I think um, it's giving you an impression of what I'm going to say uh, in a minute about what I think about these colours. Right, whites. We've got three whites. So we've got white. So they're standard white, which you could 
only argue is white really couldn't you then you have off-white which is color I tend to use more than white because um, it's got it's immediately an aged version it's slightly dulled down from the bright white and you can see if we put the next to it you've got that hint of gray in there really really uh, nice color that that would look great on my goater but I've already started using an off-white for that um, but yeah if you know that is brilliant for things like ocean liner white that is too dark for an ocean liner white but it's gr uh, a really great white for lots and lots of other things and then we've got this white grey and you can see how that darkens again so that our three whites um, you could make a wash out of that and, highlight, and and pop the detail that you've painted in, in white in that quite easily. So uh, three decent variations of white there, probably all you need. Now, the next big set of paints is actually the metallics. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. 11 metallics in here and I got really quite excited about one of them so aluminium standard um, there's all sorts of aluminiums out there but this is a good sort of standard clean medium aluminium uh, great for aluminium casts aluminium parts yeah what will be interesting will be to see how they perform and how metallic they, they actually look um, so this is probably the first set of paints that I'll have a mess around with but yeah so we have an aluminium um, oily steel which is sort of a, a pale gunmetal colour um, I would say so we've got a gunmetal as well so if we if we look at the gunmetal and look at oily steel you can see how that sort of sits in between that and probably a, a silver so again you could mix that with the aluminium and darken the aluminium or you could mix it with the gunmetal and lighten the gunmetal so oily steel nice color to have um, the gunmetal fairly standard color everyone's got to have a gunmetal color um, yeah so happy that we've got that uh, copper uh, lots of things have copper pipes and cables and bits and pieces so um, a good copper I would say that looks like without giving it a good agitate that looks like uh, a good mid copper color it's not an aged aged copper um, it's not a bright new copper so look great on copper pipes and things that have maybe uh, started to oxidize and tarnish ever so slightly so a nice warm copper color um, then we've got a silver straight silver um, so not that far off from the aluminium really you can see it's got a slight more gray hue to it um, but yeah very nice um, then we've got natural steel so if we compare that to the oily steel see the oily steel's got some darker gray notes to it um, and so that this natural steel is a bit brighter um, so yeah great for all those spades scratches and bits and pieces that you do um, right then we've got this is the color I got really excited about burnt tin I've never seen that color before um, and it, it looks a bit like the burnt iron color from AK only it's got more of a coppery brown color to it so this is going to be really really good for doing um, dark metallic washes on things like coppers and brass and bronze where you want a bit of an age look it's going to be brilliant it's also um, going to be great for um, burnt metal effects and that's why I got excited because um, I, I've been wanting to do mess around with some burnt metal effects for a little while and that plays into it really really nice that is a beautiful looking colour I've not seen that colour before um, in a, a modelling paint so I really really like that burnt tin uh, then we've got a brass which is like um, a mid um, bright brass um, it's not an antique brass and it's not a new brass so it sits right there in the middle so you'd have to mess with it if you wanted to do other things but I think that's a good standard brass 
So, yeah, you need to have a brass. So a good brass, a bronze, and a really nice dark bronze. Um, so great for your propellers and bits and pieces like that, your, your ship propellers and stuff. And then see how the burnt tin complements that really nice. So, yeah, I think that's a really lovely shade of bronze. Yeah, definitely not a new bronze. Um, then we've got a rusty brass, um, which is basically a dark, it's got a, a, a sort of burnt orange feel to it, which is really nice. So that, again, gives you some extra metallics to mess around with. Um, so, yeah, love it. And then finally... The obligatory gold, which I don't use gold that much, but I've got loads of gold paints. The problem is I've never found a decent gold paint. Um, and the the saturation in this paint looks really, really good. So I'm actually quite excited to find that because I still haven't found a gold paint that I find goes down satisfactorily. So I'm excited to try that one. Now then. We've already talked about the varnishes, and we know that we get three varnishes, matte, satin, and gloss, so we can skip them. That leaves us with these paints here. Six of them. And although they all look very different, they've all got one thing in common, and they're part of the clear range. So we've got a number of clear, so I'm guessing that these are like the translucent paints, like the clear orange, red, green, and blue that you can get from, from Tamiya, for example. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a clear orange, which is definitely a darker orange than the Tamiya clear orange. I'm not sure, uh, you'd have to see putting it on, but I'm not sure you'd get away with using that as an orange um, indicator in, on the inside of a clear part, for example. But clear orange, clear red, uh, always helpful for reflectors and that sort of stuff. Although, again, it looks a little bit on the dark side, but it, that might just be deception of being in the plastic bottle. Um, then we've got a clear green, which is a nice um, bright green. Um, so, again, possibly slightly on the dark side, but you could see how these could both end up being uh, navigation uh, uh, lens colours or something something like that. They don't look that far off, do they? Um, then we've got clear smoke. Um, so that's really helpful for, for so many things. Um, I, I do a lot of washes using the, the clear smoke things, but um, yeah, really handy for tinting glass and all sorts of stuff. Um, clear yellow. Um, probably you could mix it with the orange to, to lighten it up, I imagine. Um, I'm not, I can't think off the top of my head what I'd, what I'd be using clear yellow for. So if you use lots of clear yellow, drop it in the comments what you use it for, because I'd be intrigued what you use clear yellow for. Um, and then we've got clear blue, which uh, you can use again for tinting uh, clear parts and what have you. Um, but all of these colours thin down a little bit. They they can um, be added to other colours to create filters and stuff. They, they, they can be quite quite interesting what you can do with some of the clear colours. That is it. That is your 80 paints that are in here. So that's what you get in the box. I think it's great value. Um, because what you're actually getting is the basics of any colour you want. What they've done is they've given you a range of colours that you can mix to create anything. You've got enough of every colour to be able to darken it, lighten it, um, change it, add a blue hue, add a green hue, um, loads and loads of decent base colours that you might use straight out of the pot and lots of lots of things around it to, to help you get it where you want it to be. So I think it's a really interesting mix of paints. I'm looking forward to uh, getting stuck into them in earnest. These aren't the first ICM paints I've used. Um, I have got the paint set for the Ghost of Kiev, um, which means I've got one or two um, here that are probably duplicated. But yeah, there you have it. Um, 
80 paints I think if you're fairly new to the hobby and you you're looking for a uh, a new paint system this is probably a good starter set um, you get fewer paints than you do in the Vallejo starter set but it's you know half the price of the Vallejo um, 120 paints or whatever it is um, so it might fit your budget better I think though before you'd make a decision on jumping into an ICM paint system you want to understand how they work so what I'm going to do in in the next video is we'll look at the standard paints and how they work for brush painting and how they uh, go down for airbrushing uh, and then we'll probably do a separate video on the um, uh, on the metallics and possibly uh, a further video on the clears and the varnishes so look out for that but for now that is your introduction into the world of ICM paints and their 80 pot acrylic paint set box. Hope that was useful. Um, hit the um, notifications button and subscribe if you want to see how we get on with testing these paints and how they perform. Until then, you enjoy your modeling uh, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.